Greetings everyone. <laughs> Today I'll be giving a talk on Open Datology, which is a open source data license compliance project. But um, fair warning, this is my first in-person talk after the whole pandemic. So I'm really excited, I'm also slightly nervous. <laughs> so before we start as a note to uh, the past two years, can everybody see my screen? <laughs> Great. <laughs> A little bit about myself. So my name is Gopi Krishnan Raj Bahadur, and uh, I started my career as a programmer analyst in CSE in India back in 2012. And then I, I started doing COBOL programming actually for two years, and then I got tired of COBOL. <laughs> and then I, I went into data science. I was an engineer doing uh, data science pipelines, and then I moved into a role that that was senior software engineer, but I was mostly developing data science pipelines. And then I did a bit of research for four years uh, in Queen's University. And then now I work as a senior researcher in Huawei, where I look into uh, AI engineering, data set licensing, and all of this fun stuff. So I've been working with data for a while, and uh, that's why I feel comfortable giving this talk. <laughs> So it's a few disclaimers which my company really wanted me to put in there. This, all of these views are the views of the contributors, not of the company. That's it. Uh, I'm going to rush through this. Open Datology. I w like if there's one thing you take away from the talk, this logo, this, this name. That's good. Like I, I won if <laughs> that happens. But, but why? Why should you care? And I'm going to convince you over the next 20 odd minutes, why should you care? In the next 10 minutes, I'll tell you a little bit about what we did, which you can possibly find. So, the recent, uh, like, software ate the world, past tense. AI is eating the world, present tense. And uh, this whole revolution is kind of fueled by the availability of massive amounts of data. As you can see from a lot of evidence, news articles, we, uh, research that it's a huge market and and this is a graph that was put out by Andrew Ng. and uh, when deep learners started becoming popular it the the performance of deep learners was purely attributed to the availability of large swaths of data and almost nothing else and how do we get this data typically there are only a few ways actually one we can go buy the data from someone procure it from a third party, they sell the data. Or one can go ahead and create it from scratch, which is actually neat. Like you control end to end everything, it's nice. Uh, but both of them are expensive, time consuming, and uh, frankly, too tedious. And uh, so what do people mostly default to? They use an existing data set. They either uh, get uh, download a data set that's already available, nicely published like ImageNet or Cityscape, CIFAR, or they go hit these different search engines like Google, Flickr, and curate their own data set for their custom purpose. However, as most things in the world, they have licenses. And each license has rights and obligations. So for instance, rights are, rights are what, uh, rights tell you what you can do with the data set. Rights in a license tell you these are the things that you're entitled to do with the data set and these are some things that are not allowed. And obligations are if you if you use that right or if you cash in on that right, what are the things that you have to do so that you can continue to enjoy those rights? So for instance, down in the, uh, here below I have the license, uh, license and obligations of uh, some, uh, some common data sets, sorry, famous data sets. And so all of them, at least most of them, have some sort of license out there. And in general, we can abstract it out to license has rights, license, license outlines rights and obligations. And in this project, we, oh, sorry, yeah. So our project is about making sure that the rights and obligations outlined by the licenses are indeed valid and they can be followed. And I'll tell you why, this may sound very familiar to most people who have been working with open source for a long time. 
you have they are all open source software has license and why why am i making a fuss about it why do we need a whole project this this is why unlike open source software conducting license compatibility analysis for data sets are a little bit hard primarily because uh, the provenance lineage and license related challenges differ from open source software because in software the ip is clear the copyright is fairly clear however when it comes to data it is not like who created the software who created the data who owns the data and who curates the data are, can all be three different parties and and they all have an action that they perform which means do they own their ip we don't know it's a, it's an open question and we don't make any claims here we are just saying there are risks and doing this analysis is hard and i'll i'll tell you wh why is it hard so some of the provenance related challenges are like unclear licensing range well, I'll go through each of these challenges. This is just a slide that kind of gives you an overview, gets you hooked in, and uh, we'll go through it one by one. So provenance-related challenges. One of the first provenance-related challenges is unclear licensing range. What do I mean by that? Let's consider this data set C for 10, and you want to use C for 10 in 2022, which is now. However, uh, and this data set was created in 2009, and this, this is all they say about license. Uh, they, they say one line which says that please cite if you use this data set and uh, this was created in 2009 which was actually created from another data set which was called 80 million tiny images and that was in turn created from a lot of these uh, other search engines which were hit we don't know when because none of these papers documents that so the license from an arbitrary range there should apply because uh, licenses of many of these uh, other search engines have evolved now and we can't use the license currently so we need to find the uh, ideal licensing range which is a which is a very specific challenge and then uh, unclear licensing locations in at least in source code these days it's fairly straight there, there are only a couple places where you can find the license it's either in the in the source package or in a readme file or in a license.txt However, for data sets, it's still very wild out there. <laughs> there are sometimes the, the licenses are present in a completely different web page, or sometimes it's only present in the paper with which it was published, or sometimes it's not at all present. Like sometimes there's just a note that says, that, uh, do this if you're using this data set, and that's about it. And uh, the other problem is many of these data sets, because of the pervasiveness of machine learning models, they are available in so many different platforms that each platform can sometimes even slap a license of their own. For instance, because C for 10 license is not very clear, some, some of these platforms say it's uh, licensed under MIT. Some say it is licensed under um, Creative Commons. But we don't, uh, like, and that's a problem because for anyone who downloads it, they, they might just think that that is the license that applies while the source is not clear. And for lineage related challenges, This is actually interesting. Uh, for C for 10, if you just read the paper, they say, oh, we created it from 80 million tiny images. However, 80 million tiny images data set was actually created from several different sources. And if you're using C for 10 and if you're not doing a deep dive on it, there is no way you're gonna find all the sources that are associated with it, which means that all of these license actually applies to C for 10 data set, but it's removed. and. Uh, like nobody knows unless we go through and uh, analyze it and uh, another challenge which we are not tackling as a part of this uh, project yet is identifying the minimum licensable unit so many of these image data sets or many data sets have uh, different levels of abstraction so for instance these have uh, so c for 10 was created from 80 million tiny images 80 million tiny images was created from all of these different search engines and each of them have an image which has a license of its own. So which unit do we consider? Do we just say, okay, let's just go to Google and after that it's unma unmanageable, so we're just gonna stop there. Are we gonna say that or are we gonna say every individual image license should apply and then final license should uh, be a representation of all of it? We don't know and identifying this is a huge task. And finally, 
the uh, license interactions are not very clear. Like how MIT license on LGPL interacts is fairly well studied, but how please cite if you intend to use this data set on this custom license interacts is not straightforward or clear. <laughs> so these are some of the common challenges. So open datology. Now I hope I have convinced you that this is a problem and our project tries to solve this through uh, a few different things by uh, license compliance analysis process and putting all that metadata that we get out there in a cloud in a portal so that people can come and use the results and if people do this process they can share the metadata and they can contribute and as a community we start having a repository of what are the act final rights and obligations that are associated with each publicly available data set out there eventually but at least to begin with some of the common ones and I'll tell you how uh, we kind of can do it with this project uh, for first uh, uh, publicly available data set let's uh, to make this easy because I usually understand things through examples let's take an example where an AI engineer wants to use the C410 data set for either to commercially distribute it or to release a product with AI model or to commercialize the output and uh, because the license as we as I've been repeating just says please cite it he is not clear so he wants to go through this uh, we suggest he goes through this process and that would enable him to analyze the final rights and obligations for instance the process looks something like this and I'll walk us through it so first one extracts the license and the key thing here is they do their best effort possible to identify it from the source but if not wherever they download the data set from they capture the license there and then in the provenance extraction step it's key to identify the official source of the data and see if the data set source sorry the license that they originally obtained and the license that was provided in the source are the same things if not we suggest them to file a PR or do something to change it but if not at least now you know and uh, kind of mark it as an untrusted source and use this official version of, version of the data source and and we have some templates with which we suggest that uh, one should extract the metadata associated with the official source this helps us kind of mitigate the non-standard license location problems and then the, uh, the fun part lineage extraction this right now we do it manually through just elbow grease going we trace the data set creation process by reading the paper identifying the sources and then to do the uh, licensing range so far in the project what we recommend is set a year like fi find the top level source say for instance if it's C for 10 uh, for 80 million tiny images was published in 2006 so hopefully the license range of uh, all the data sources around 2005 to 2006 is what applies and we recommend uh, one to use way back in way back machine or something like that to extract the license from that time and decompose the rights and obligations and once these details are extracted most AI engineers are able to do this we suggest that they put this in a standard format which I show which I will show and uh, in the data provenance table and the data lineage table and pass it on to the pass it on to someone with legal expertise eventually we hope this is a database where someone can submit this metadata and ask if uh, what is the final rights and obligations and there is enough atomic pieces in this database and the interaction analysis is done that results can be automatically provided but for now we have six data sets so that's not a lot so we suggest for the license compliance assessment the lawyer or someone with legal expertise takes this license of the different sources and puts it in a format like this this is a format that we came up with which is based on Montreal data license which was proposed by the Mila group the Yoshua Benjia group in uh, University of Montreal and we extended it for a few more use cases the blue kind of represents where we extended it but we, we we are promoting this format because this acts like a good intermediate rep uh, intermediate between the AI engineers and the legal team so AI engineers have enough expertise to populate these fields and identify or, or uh, consume these fields and uh, identify the obligations that are outlined here and legal team can always generate 
legalese from this template and this forms as a this acts as a good intermediate representation and and a means for customizable licenses for the future and once that is done the lawyer, lawyer puts all of those different licenses of different data sources in this format and then does a first order interaction analysis with legal expertise of course and finally ascertains what are the rights that are actually allowed so this is uh, this is an interesting analysis because if we just decompose c for 10 c license like the top level license you would see all rights are allowed however after all the interaction analysis that we did we find that commercialization of the output or commercialization of the model or tagging distributing and representing the model commercially is not allowed <laughs> and so many people use these data sets currently and yeah here are the results of our analysis so uh, uh, the, our process can be adapted and retrofitted for uh, pre curated uh, data sets that one curates to the only change that they have to do is now if someone's creating their own data set they know what the provenance is they know the sources that they, they're hitting i'm we suggest that they use our templates that we provide to record this uh, provenance details the lineage details and rest of the process remains the same so that is the overview of the technical stuff or the the crux of our process i'm going to take us through what we have done so far and how we could use the community's help yeah I, I'm hoping the, ana the the analysis that we do will always be present. We'll make sure that we maintain it, but uh, we can't speak for the dataset creators. I'm hoping the papers that they publish are in archive, and archive is immutable, like is always there, right? Like, and and this is uh, once again, this is uh, I, I don't know a good answer to that. Yeah, Th that. Uh, but as uh, as the the problem, the source of the problem is the fact that a lot of the people who created these data sets have not been very diligent at assigning a license or maintaining maintaining it, and we hope it changes with projects like these. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so as I was saying, uh, the current progress, we we put it into four pillars. One is. Uh, the processes that we need to establish, we work on that. And then we develop some tools and automations to enable those processes. Because if we say you have to manually do all of it, like beyond three months, no one's gonna stick around. <laughs> so, and then we wanna build a community around it as uh, as you, you guys are already probably aware, this is a massive, massive undertaking. It's not possible for one company or one research group or any one person to do it. And, we, and this is the need of the hour, is a need of the hour. And uh, we hope we can recruit the community, get them excited, be, make, spread the awareness that there are risks associated with using these data sets and can get people in. And we also want to develop standards around it. So I want to give a quick shout out to every, all the core contributors who started, uh, started this project off. They did a lot of work, a lot of nights went into it. Thank you. So current progress is this process, this beautiful process. We tried to publish a paper around it. It's still on revision and uh, you, can, uh, you can find it in archive. And uh, the results. So we analyze six commonly used data sets and if you have so been developing AI for a while, you might recognize most of these data sets. And this is what you can do commercially with it. 
but I can tell you if you go to certain pre-trained model sources, they are charging money for some of the models that are trained on these. And I won't name names, <laughs> but uh, yeah. And uh, to enable community building, we put all the metadata that we collected in a portal and all the final rights and obligations that we have analyzed in this portal. So it's free, we can, you can go so, uh, look it up and uh, contribute to it if you do any analysis. And we decompose the final things into this nice, uh, you can do this, you cannot do this, these are the limitations and these are the obligations. So it's easy to consume and nobody gets confused hopefully. And uh, yeah, this is the provenance uh, metadata schema that we have developed. So all the provenance details can be captured and the lineage details can be, uh, provenance details of different sources that is involved in the whole data set life cycle can be captured. And uh, we're open for collaboration. I have the GitHub link both in the first slide and the last slide, and I'm happy to share it with anyone. We are actively looking for volunteers. And as for tools, I showed you that nice uh, data set license template. So we came up with a very alpha version of a tool, which asks you certain questions, uh, saying that, oh, do you want to do, uh, do research on this data set? And it guides you to uh, guides you through it to create a license uh, for your data set. So we hope the data sets that are being created will use this tool, and they can use this uh, nice Montreal extended Montreal data set license so that it, it is easy to consume and uh, it becomes a customizable license. And this is uh, our tool. And we are we currently have rudimentary capabilities of uh, generating the SPDX uh, of. Uh, to work with SPDX in the future, uh, uh, SPDX like markup of our uh, metadata. And uh, we are actively working with uh, SPDX community kit here to have a data bomb. And once the data bomb is there, all this metadata would be represented there and there should be full compatibility with tool support. And these are the formats I've been talking about for a while now. <laughs> the provenance we suggest that right now be recorded in this format and uh, the license be recorded uh, in the Montreal data license format. And once the data bomb is there, we would ideally want all this provenance detail represented in a data bomb so that it plays nice with the rest of the world. And we welcome feedback. Look, through all of this, anytime, if you have feedback, reach out to me. I'm, I'm online most of the times. And uh, yeah, for the standards purpose, we've been developing an initial data bomb in collaboration with SPDX and uh, this is the, so this is what we've done. And now this is the fun part. This is what we are trying to do later. We don't want to stop at licenses. Uh, we want to like, we want to extend this project to capture all the problems that, uh, that come with copyrights, privacy, ethics. Uh, yeah, it's a massive undertaking, <laughs> but hopefully enough people uh, realize that there, there is, a lot of things to be done if we were, we are to use these data sets. And these data sets are going to power the next decade or so for machine learning. Unless we are going to radically move away from supervised and unsupervised learning models as, as a thing, we are going to need data on a lot of them. And all of these have to be answered, especially with regulations, uh, regulations coming in and all the government starting to put the screws. <laughs> and uh, to develop, and we realize that most of it is uh, manual right now, and that's hard, but uh, we had to start somewhere, and uh, that's where we started. But uh, we want to uh, we want to start developing tools that uh, tools like data clone detection, which will help us analyze the lineage, uh, so to identify and to automatically extract provenance uh, lineage and uh, do the final interaction analysis. For instance. For automatic provenance extraction and lineage extraction, we have uh, we, are, we are looking into um, NLP methods to uh, read through these websites, understand the semantics of the website, and uh, identify where the source is. Or read through the paper to identify where the official source should be located, and stuff like that. And uh, for lineage analysis, where multiple data sources are involved, and this has been around for a while now, uh, we can use. Data, we can use data clones. Uh, we can use data clone detection, which kind of goes and finds that is my image a part of another? Is is the image in my data set a part of a 
another data source like Google or Facebook and then say that, oh, this might be a potential data source for it. And there are many different types of clones. Uh, if anyone's worked with uh, code clones, it's uh, like actual uh, exact duplicates, slight modifications, or uh, is it just a is it something that someone took it and uh, modified it so that it's a different source? So there are many different kinds of duplicates and the challenges that we have to deal with here. But uh, we are currently working on tools that will help us detect at least type one and type three clones, which is uh, mod index data. So type one is uh, is clones that are uh, just duplicates, and type three is clones that have modifications or new additions to it. And this is hopefully the timeline we have, but <laughs> we uh, we wish uh, we ho we are very open on all forms of contribution. Uh, if you want to come work with us on some research, if any of this sounds very interesting, we are very happy to do it. Or uh, if you want to help us write those NLP codes to extract provenance or extract lineage, we'd be super happy. And if you're a liar, please contact me. <laughs> and <laughs> licenses are hard. Legal language is clunky. We don't know enough. <laughs> and we can use the help. And uh, that's my next spiel. Like we want to establish uh, governing policy, which we are trying to do with the help of the LFAI and Data Foundation. I'm happy to announce that our project is uh, sandboxed with uh, LFAI and Data Foundation. And they are helping us with some of these uh, policy uh, creation and uh, wiki creation. Uh, However, uh, we can't officially put it up yet because the paperwork hasn't gone through. <laughs> so, and uh, finally, we are also trying to take all of this knowledge and create awareness and at least from this point forward, make the world a little bit of a better place by working with standard communities to create standards. And uh, I've, I've been working with Kate, Karen to form this AI bomb profile where uh, data bomb is also a part of it. And hopefully, this, this creates more awareness. So the goal is SPDX will eventually capture all the details that are associated with data provenance, lineage, and the license decomposition. So that all the sources are tracked, all the official sources are marked, all the licenses are available. And once it's all available, it's just a pro hopefully a matter of doing the interaction analysis, which I hope the platform grows enough to have enough interaction analysis done so that it's all it can be codified into a first order logic or second order <laughs> so this is the look ahead uh, we have a timeline we want to do all of this we need help and uh, we want uh, if you want to contribute in any way through your time if you want to just analyze some of the data sets provenance lineage just mark the data sets up or join the discussions just, uh, shoot us an email or join our Slack, we are a very friendly bunch, we respond promptly, and we will be really grateful. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my talk. I know it's the last day of the conference. Thank you. Super grateful. <laughs>. That's almost one of the motivations why we started this project. Like I don't like I'm not a regulating body. We are not regulating body, so we don't know the answer. There are uh, different countries can decide differently too. Uh, also with Copilot I don't know the full full case but some of the things that I've read were about uh, some of the license terms were in, were violated and that is not okay. <laughs> Copyright is a different problem but contract that's a different problem too right and we are right now dealing with contract and so so your question was uh, many of these uh, data is being used uh, and the copyright is not clear and what happens then, right? And that's why we need to do copyright compliance issue. We need to tackle copyright compliance issues, but also we don't want to 
just rely on one government body to give a regulation, right? Like what is in US might not apply in Canada. So our project aims at identifying the risks. It may or may not apply to you, but it's always good to know the risks, right? And that's at least the goal. Yeah. Yes. So someone made presentation, I mean. Thank you. You should contribute. Join our Slack. Definitely. Um, so uh, I think uh, you had shown a slide where uh, you have shown different aspects, one on the uh, copyright uh, and so many other things. Uh, so there, are you also considering the, the patent aspect? So we are talking about licenses. So are we, talking, uh, are we also considering the patent? <laughs> I think copyright and contract together should address that. But uh, I will... I. We are not explicitly considering patents right now, especially because that database is not accessible. Yeah. So hopefully, enough lawyers get excited about it, and they can help us with this. <laughs> yeah. Are they different? Is Ethics should be common everywhere, right? Yeah, people are trying to, you know, create something uh, like how your system, your system. No, I, I, I understand. I, I think the ethics itself is the same ethics. Uh, we will hopefully be able to codify it to look what are the problems that are happening in data sets. But right now, as I said, there are a few contributors. We have limited expertise. We need people. And once there are people, we want to tackle ethics, we want to tackle everything, we want to make the world a better place, but we don't have the people right now. Please join us. All the best for them. Thank you. Yeah, I see that uh, in Q4 uh, next year there will be a uh, new standards. What's the uh, relation between the standards and open data logic? Which standard again? Yeah, here. Oh, so, okay. Your question was, in Q4, there's, going, there's potentially a standard, what is the relationship, right? So open data logic relies on a lot of metadata to conduct this data license analysis. So we are working with the standard communities to create the standard so that all this metadata can be captured going forward. And uh, open data logic can easily use this data to compute the risks associated with the uh, data sets. Because without a standard form of capturing this metadata, right now we are having a hard time collecting this metadata. Yeah, uh, we got why, why it, it's starting in next year. Because standards take time. So uh, it starts um, creating now, but it will finish. I yes. Think. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah like, as, as part of SPDX, yeah. taking SPDX through, I still, it was part of the 3.0 and Yes, sir. Yeah, it's a bit of a side question, but I wanted to come back to the co-pilot question. Um, this is something that I'm actively working with OSI to develop a new license around, because right now, legally speaking, you cannot sue someone for their code unless you demonstrate intent, and generative code has no individual to type intent to. So we need a new process to define where the legal agency exist within that space. So if you're curious about that, I would love to chat about that so we can get that done. Yeah, just to repeat to the audience, OSA is trying to work on a license that addresses the concerns associated with generative code and Sal's looking for people to work on it with. <laughs> Any other questions? Or if you, yeah. Please take a picture, shoot a message, and if you know lawyers, bug them into joining us. <laughs> well, once again, thank you so much. The project's name is Open Datology. I'm Gopi. I'm around. Uh, come talk to me. And uh, let's make the world a better place one data set at a time. Thank you.